Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making some children's toys. Well, throughout the 2021 season here on the show, um, I produced quite a few children's toys where I would design and make a pattern for them and you guys just had to ask for it and I would send out the pattern. I sent out hundreds of these things and it was very well received. Everyone seems to love the kids toys. I received comment after comment of please design more, please make more, please make more. And that's what we're gonna do today. I've designed several toys. We will spread them out over a period of time so that it's not a toy every week kind of thing. But for today's installment, we're going to be making a flatbed transport truck. So let's head over to the bench and see what we're looking at. Well, this is the pattern that I've come up with for our flatbed. And I'll be honest here, I've never made it. This today on the show is the first time that it's ever being made. Um, I make them first on the computer and then test them in the shop. So we're going to see how this goes. Well, we're going to start off with the cab chassis so i have cut a piece of scrap walnut it's three quarters of an inch thick it is one and a quarter wide and four and a quarter long and all i'm going to do is i'm going to coat this with masking tape we will use spray adhesive and let it set up for three minutes just to tack up and we will adhere these pieces of the pattern to our stock well, the first thing that we want to do is drill all of our holes. We have three axle holes here and one hitch receiver hole. Now, typically all of the axle holes in any of the body parts will be 5 16 uh, in diameter. This hitch receiver hole, however, this is going to be 9 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So <clears throat> once we get all these holes drilled, we can head over to the scroll saw. Well, because you're cutting an inch and a quarter thick stock, you want to make sure that your blade is nice and sharp. So I have a brand new number seven PGT blade in here, and we're just going to cut out our side profile first. Just take it slow and you'll make it through it. Now, if you don't have a scroll saw, don't worry about it. You can use a fret saw, you can use your band saw, whatever you like. But I'll get this cut and then we'll move on to the next step. And once you get that side profile cut, you can flip it over and we will now cut the profile of the uh, top of our chassis. So now that we have our chassis cut, I want to cut all of our wheels. Um, all I'm going to do, they're all a quarter of an inch thick. They're all one inch in diameter with a quarter inch through hole right in the middle of each of them. Um, I'm just going to draw these out onto some quarter inch walnut and cut them at the scroll saw. I don't think we need a video of that. It would be excruciatingly painful to watch me cut 18 wheels. But I'm going to get those cut and we will also cut three of our axles for this. Those are quarter inch uh, diameter dowels and they are all two inches long. You're going to cut three of those for now to coincide with the three axle holes in our chassis. Well there we have our ten wheels and our three axles for our cab. Now I'll give you some advice. If you're not that good with the scroll saw or you're not confident in your ability, if you have access to a lathe, you can cut these on the scroll saw, then mount them on a pen mandrel and sand them till they're all equal. Just make sure that you do all 10 at once so that they're all the same size for the cab. If you don't have a lathe, you can always mount them to a quarter 20 bolt and put them in your drill press, sand them, 
on the side to get them all the same um, diameter and all smooth. So now I've given these all a good sanding and we're going to glue them up. So what you want to do is you want to glue for the front axles, you want to glue them up so that you have approximately one eighth of an inch protruding out of the wheel. And then you will place your axle in here like this and then take a second wheel and mount it so that there's approximately one eighth of an inch protruding on your axle. That will give you plenty of space for these tires to spin freely. On the back axles, you basically want to place your axle in your chassis and then place your tires over top of your axles, glue them in place so that you have them centered on your axle with equal amounts protruding and you'll want to leave a little space in between the rear wheels. It doesn't have to be a huge space, but you just want something to define that it's a dually wheel. It just gives it that nice little extra touch. So I'm gonna glue all 10 wheels on here and I'll show you what we've got at that point. And that's what we end up with at this point. We have all of the wheels glued on there. I think they look great. It rolls really nicely. And uh, we can move on to the next step. And what the next step is, as far as I'm concerned, and I designed the toy, so I would know, <laughs> is I want to do the cab. So let me show you the method I'm going to use for doing the cab. Now you need two of these pieces and one of the main body. So what I've done here is I have cut two blanks, quarter inch thick, for these cab walls. I have also cut one blank that's an inch and a quarter thick for the main cab body. Now, these ones here, this, this guy here is an inch and a quarter wide. It's one and three eighths, and it's uh, one and three quarter inches tall. These ones here are um, one and three eighths wide, the same as our core, but they're two inches long and only a quarter inch thick. And what I've done is I've taken the pattern and made a template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up our template on our two quarter inch thick blanks. We're going to trace this out and we're going to cut the window and the wheel well only only the window and the wheel well. And once we get those cut, I'm gonna show you what to do from there. Okay, so with both of our sides, the windows cut out and the wheel wells cut out, we can now glue it to our core blank, aligning the back edge and the top. And then once we get that all aligned, we're gonna let it completely dry. You also want to make sure that you clean up your squeeze out because uh, you don't want squeeze out in the window areas. And once this piece is all dried up, we will use a piece of sandpaper attached to some MDF and sand the back to get it nice and flush. And then we will head over to the belt sander and at that point, we can sand that front profile um, on the cab. Now, doing it all one shot like this will give you a much cleaner result and it will have it so that your cab looks much nicer uh, in the end. And once you've given it a good hand sanding all over and taken off your rough or your uh, sharp edges, you can just test fit it on your rig and it should sit just like that. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Now, the last piece here to make for this, or actually there's two pieces, but the main piece here that I'm talking about is the sleeper. Now this is just a block of three quarter inch thick uh, material that is one and three quarter by one and three quarter. I've hand sanded it to round over the edges to give the sleeper some definition and that will just get glued in place like that. So once you're happy with the way that uh, this all fits together, we can glue the cab 
together, glue it onto our chassis. And then the last thing to make at this point then is the hitch receiver. So the very final piece for the cab of the truck is the hitch receiver. And it's just a quarter inch thick piece. Follow the pattern and cut it out. The hole in the middle is 930 seconds. So what I would suggest is using your drill bit to line up both the hole in your chassis and the hole in your hitch receiver so that when you glue this down, you know that those holes are going to line up perfectly. And using our drill bit, we'll line it up and glue this in place. And then once that finishes setting up, we can uh, remove the drill bit and that will be the cab done. So now we can turn our attention to the trailer. Well, the first thing we need in order to make our trailer is the trailer frame. So I have the pattern here and I'm just gluing it down to a piece of three quarters uh, inch thick scrap mahogany. Now, <laughs> you don't have to use mahogany. You can use whatever you like. Um, I just happened to have this on the rack and thought, why not? So the first thing we want to do is drill our holes. And the first holes here will be our axle um, holes, which are typical at 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. The other hole that we want to drill right here is for our re hitch receiver pin. And that will be a quarter inch diameter hole. It will be, well, deep enough to pass through the thickness of our trailer frame, and it will be centered on the three quarters of an inch of mahogany and five eighths of an inch back from the end. And now with both of our axle holes drilled and our hitch pin drilled, uh, we can take this over to the scroll saw and cut it out. It's a simple cut with a number seven blade. Um, I'll see you when I get it done. And that would be our frame piece cut. So we now need eight more wheels. We cut them earlier. We're going to sand them. We have two two inch long quarter inch dowels for the rear axles. And we have one one inch long dowel quarter inch diameter and that will be our hitch pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue our hitch pin in so that it is just like that flush with the top of our frame of our trailer. And just like we glued up our dualies on our cab, we will uh, get everything sanded and then glue them with approximately one eighth of an inch of the dowel protruding out and a tiny little space between the dually wheels. And we will do this for both of the axles and uh, glue them in place and let them dry. Make sure you give everything a good sanding before you start gluing this together. It's a little difficult to sand it once it's glued. So we're gonna get this all glued up and the wheels glued onto it. And then there's just one last piece to make uh, to complete this trailer for our truck. And the final piece to finish the trailer is the flatbed itself that will get glued to our frame. Now, it is nothing more than a quarter inch thick piece of poplar in my case, and it's one and three quarter inches wide and 10 and a half inches long. Now, you want to glue it to your frame with the frame centered along here on the width. I'm going to give you a warning though here make sure that the end where your hitch receiver is, is glued flush with your flatbed. So in other words, like this. If it is not glued flush like that, you will not be able to turn the truck because the radius won't allow it to turn. These corners will hit on your cab. So just make sure, there you go, there is the warning. Don't say I didn't tell you so. Uh, but you can glue this on, making sure that the front end, as I said, aligns with the front of the flatbed. And there you have it. A flatbed trailer truck. Guys, this thing is adorable. 
I don't know what else to say about it other than it's really adorable. I mean, what child would not want to play with this? Now, one of the things that I did with mine that was not in the pattern is I decided I wanted to put some kind of a load on, uh, on the flatbed. So I had some half inch diameter dowel that was warped and not much used for any other project. So I cut it into eight inch lengths and glued it onto the flatbed. And it just kind of, in my opinion anyway, it just finishes it off. Now, of course, it's 100% optional. Uh, it's not on the pattern that I designed for this, but if you want to add it, I think it looks great. Um, just what a load of fun. I can't stress enough. You guys know how much I love to promote children out in the shop, working with their hands instead of on the electronic devices. And this little toy um, is very doable for a child to make with mommy or daddy's help. There are some things there that may be a little too hard for them, um, such as cutting that main chassis of the cab. That inch and a quarter walnut is a tough cut. Um, so mommy or daddy may have to cut that for them. But the rest of it, cutting the wheels or sanding the wheels or, or what have you, or even if you don't think that they are able to do it, help you glue it together. It is quality time spent with your young ones that will never, ever be forgotten. Uh, they will be in their adult years talking about how they used to go out in the shop with their parents and make these toys and how awesome these toys were to play with. And I don't know about you, but I love to play with one of these. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to. <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. This has been a lot of fun, as all the toys in my series have been. Um, I really enjoy making these. I enjoy designing them. I enjoy making them. Uh, I enjoy doing the design on paper and then bringing it out here to the shop and seeing if my design works. Because what you see here on the show is always the first maiden voyage of the build. So you never know what's going to happen. This one worked out perfectly. I did not have to change a single thing. So not only do I enjoy designing them and enjoy building them, I enjoy sharing them. So if you guys would like a copy of this pattern to make this truck for yourself, not a problem. You can send me a message over on the channel's Facebook page. You can drop me an email uh, at a cut above underscore woodworking at hotmail.com and I would be more than happy to send this pattern to you. I don't want anything for it other than for you to enjoy it. That's enough payment for me. That's why I make these. I make them to share and that's what I want to do. So if you guys want one, just drop me a line. I'll send it your way ASAP. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, click the bell and then you won't miss notifications of the future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you've had as much fun with it as what I have today. And honestly, guys, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. <laughs>